effort on the part of Injin Chi indeed, but Morales, again, the busier fighter throughout, comes away with the hard-earned victory over Injin Chi. Up next, it'll be the main event. Roy Jones Jr. brings his act to Los Angeles as he takes on the man who is fighting in his own territory, Julio Gonzalez. As we take a look at Roy Jones, he recognizes, as he has said, that this is Hollywood, and therefore he has brought his A game to deliver an outstanding performance. Julio, for his part, this will be his biggest payday, some $500,000 which he says will enable him to buy his first home, but he wants to deliver first in the ring. Back upstairs at our host position, James Brown along with Emmanuel Stewart. Now, Julio Gonzalez feels, I'm not sure that many people will agree with this, but he believes that Roy Jones Jr. has lost an awful lot of speed. Your thoughts? Well, I think even more so than him, his trainer, Mac Kurihara, believes it, that he's called Roy everything from he runs like a chicken and everything. And uh, I think it's got to convey itself over to the fighter. But I think that Roy may have lost something, but still, this is a fight that Roy's going to put it all together, I believe. I haven't saw this animated since he was fighting uh, Monte Griffin. He's really excited about this fight. He wants to make a statement, and you're going to see the best of Roy tonight. Well, for what it's worth, we saw Roy blowing off his hands in the locker room, <laughs> saying that he, Roy himself, is very impressed with his own hand speed, so much so that he was afraid to eat his own food because he might have suffered from indigestion going that quickly. <laughs> Gonzalez feels that his game plan will be to chase Roy throughout the evening. If he catches Roy, what weapons does he have to bring to bear? Well, Roy is going to be very deceptive. I think he knows how to catch punches. And even though Gonzalez is a good puncher, a hard puncher, he's not that crisp a puncher. And he leaves himself open when he punches. But if he starts connecting with Roy, we may have to find out what Roy's made out of inside. I think Roy's going to be able to see most of his punches coming in. What do you think Roy is made of inside? I think Roy would do what he has to do. I think he's tougher inside than we give him credit for if he has to do it. So far, he hasn't had to do it. All right. Well, for what it's worth, again, Roy Jones says if he does plan to run like a dog, when Gonzalez catches him, he won't like what he catches. All right, double duty tonight being performed by our interpreter, Ray Torres. He is also our locker room reporter. Let's check in now with Ray Torres. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Roy, Gonzalez is a body puncher. Are you at all concerned about the power punches that he will be trying to land on you? Uh, no, I'm not concerned about the power punches he's going to be trying to land on. Uh, that's part of the fight game, you know. Uh, when guys come out, they're supposed to land vicious body punches or vicious head shots, whichever one they can. All right, Roy, uh, you, you made it public that your hands have hurt in the past and that uh, you have some trouble with your hands. Uh, have you uh, wrapped your hands differently this time? No, I ain't wrapping no different. So it's, it's all the same. Uh, your hand is not uh, hurting right now. I said I got a problem with my hand. I ain't seen nothing wrong with my feet. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, you never had the pressure from the critics or the public regarding being involved in a slugfest, but being that this is at the... Uh, Staples Center, it's sold out. Your first fight in Los Angeles. Are you going to get into a slugfest? Well, hopefully not. Uh, Eric Morales just gave the crowd a beautiful slugfest, and I'm glad he went and did it for him because Roy Jones don't believe in slugfest unless he have to. However, if a cat seemed to catch up with me, and I feel like all my energy that I'm using to box is useless, then we'll go to war. <laughs> so then we can expect a more aggressive Roy Jones tonight? You can expect a monster. A uh -huh. most monster. You know why? Word. You know why? Tell them why, y'all. Y'all must have forgot. 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 Back to JB, guys. Y'all had to. All right, Ray. I am certainly very thankful that Roy decided to back up off of Ray just a bit and give him a good interview, and indeed he did. All right, folks, the main event is next. Roy Jones Jr. sees tonight's fight as a new beginning, the start of another phase of his career. In our meeting with him yesterday, Roy was extremely passionate, and as you heard Emmanuel say, he was very animated. Roy says that's because he's on a mission to erase all doubts as to who is the pound-for-pound -pound champion. But he insists recent upsets are reminders to never take any challenger lightly. Roy Jones Jr., one of the most gifted fighters of this era, has struggled to keep boxing fans enthused as of late. 44 wins with 36 by knockout rarely needs justification. But with the little-known opponent and the specter of a mega-bout in the future, Jones very well could be looking at Julio Gonzalez as just another formality. 
Gonzalez enters tonight with an unblemished record of 27 wins and no losses. But is Gonzalez overmatched? A glance at recent history gives him ample lessons in the anatomy of an upset. Prince Nassim Hamed entered his fight against Marco Antonio Barrera with all the flash and fanfare that is his custom. The only problem... Big left hook by Barrera! Look at the right hand by Barrera! He wants to close the show with authority! The Prince was unaccustomed to having the fight brought to him. Fourteen days later in the Republic of South Africa, Lennox Lewis paid for his lack of focus by losing two titles to the opportunistic Hasim Rahman. What a story as Hasim Rahman becomes the heavyweight champion of the world in one of the biggest upsets in the history of the division. The ring is the great equalizer, the champions and challengers separated by the smallest of margins. This is why building legacies takes years and destroying them only an instant. champion Roy Jones Jr. against undefeated challenger Julio Gonzalez. We're all waiting to see just what Gonzalez has. Will he be another victim of this outstanding champion? Or will Julio surprise the world the way Hasim Rahman did several months ago? Jones versus Gonzalez is being brought to you by Staples Center, GoldenPalace.com, Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This Bud's for you. By Bodyhead Entertainment, pleased to bring you Round One, the album by Roy Jones Jr. And we're also being brought to you by Jordan Brand. TVKO pay-per-view from HBO and by America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. During tonight's main event, go to keyword TVKO to get up-to-date information about the fighters and to judge the main event round by round with results given during and after the fight. While in a town full of stars, championship performances are expected. Roy Jones Jr., the undisputed light heavyweight champion, is pumped to put on an Oscar-like performance and convince one and all that his star is still shining the brightest. The challenger, Julio Gonzalez, is confident, however, that tonight will be his coming out party. And coming out to check out the action here in L.A., former congressman and NFL quarterback Jack Kemp. From the first place Dodgers, the man who's the cleanup hitter, Gary Sheffield. And yes, this man rates atop the pound for pound list on many lists. Welterweight champion, WBC version, Sugar Shane Mosley. Oscar award winning actor, Oscar, make that Cuba Gooding Jr. Yes, indeed, he says, show me the money and a very popular radio personality here in Los Angeles, Danny Bonaducci, and a man who certainly has made his career a successful one off of fight themes with his movies, Mr. Sylvester Stallone. And good evening, everyone. Once again, everyone, I'm James Brown, alongside with Hall of Fame manager and trainer Emmanuel Stewart. Well, Emmanuel, despite Gonzalez's real tough and courageous uh, act in the ring, as a matter of fact, he was floored three times against Julian Letterlow. There's still many people who are asking the question, who is he and is he a worthy opponent? I think he's a worthy opponent. In fact, he may not be as skillful, may not have the experience as compared to other fighters that Roy has fought, but he brings a heart and a determination, and that's what's a big factor when you fight a guy like Roy Jones. Well, in fact, we all know that he is in the ring tonight, Gonzalez, against the most gifted fighter in the game today, that being Roy Jones Jr. Now, despite having a height advantage at 6'2 and a reach advantage, Gonzalez seems to nullify that by preferring to fight the inside game. Is that the prescription for success against Roy? I think it's a good prescription. I don't think he would be able to use his height with Roy because Roy is bled in speed. I think the best thing he can do is what he's going to do to try to make a physical inside fight 
to pressure Roy and to keep Roy in the ropes as much as possible and try to force him to come out of his normal stylish style of fighting and to make it a street fight, so to say. All right, well, we're hoping indeed for a sweet street fight if, in fact, we can get just that. All right, let's head back downstairs to the guys who will set the action for you, Big George Foreman, Larry Merchant, and Fran Charles. Fran? All right, JB. Well, the last time that Roy Jones Jr. was here in Southern California, he was spending the night in L.A. He was supposed to be an awards presenter for a local awards show. And as Roy lay in his hotel bed, an earthquake struck. Well, Jones made a quick escape out of town. He hasn't been back to the Los Angeles area since. This will be his first fight here in L.A. in his 12-year fighting career. And Jones says he looks to rock L.A. with earthquake-like proportions tonight here against Julio Gonzalez. But the question is, is Gonzalez a worthy enough opponent for Roy Jones Jr.? Let's bring in George Foreman now. And George with a mega fight looming with possibly Felix Trinidad or Bernard Hopkins on the way. Roy says he's very excited about this new beginning. He almost feels as if this is a rebirth for him. Are these just words or do you truly believe that Jones is excited about what lay ahead? Uh, he, he's better get excited about tonight. There are many of champions who thought about the fight after the fight and they got knocked out in a less serious boxing match. This could be tonight because there's so much talk about uh, Trinidad and all of that that we can see an upset all the sounds are starting to pan out all right big George let's bring in now Larry Merchant and Larry Roy has worked desperately tirelessly to try to build up Julio Gonzalez as a dangerous opponent will we be lucky enough to have Gonzalez be as dangerous enough to push Roy Jones out of his casual style first first thought it's Julio as in who is <laughs> this challenger du jour? Well, he's young, he's tough, he's hungry, and he's unbeaten. So perhaps he can bring out the seldom seen best or even beast <laughs> in Roy Jones. He's getting $500,000, more than five times as much as he's made in his entire career, largely because anyone named Julio in Southern California fighting a celebrity fighter like Roy Jones figures to have many people paying to see him. His cut of that $500,000 purse will enable him to quit his job in a bowling alley and to move out of his mother-in-law's house. Although he assures us, Fran, that he loves his mother-in-law dearly. <laughs> but that still might be a tough way for him to go. Julio Gonzalez will be fighting in front of the largest crowd he's ever fought in front of. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for tonight's main event, the light heavyweight championship between Roy Jones Jr. and Julio Gonzalez. Jones, eight years older than Gonzalez, and you see Gonzalez enjoys the three-inch height advantage and also the four-inch reach advantage. Both fighters coming in at under the 170 pound weight limit and when Julio Gonzalez stepped on our unofficial scales he weighed in at 183 pounds seven pounds more than Jones punch that numbers Larry well one number you might be interested in is that in a few hours Gonzalez will turn to be 25 Roy Jones is a resourceful fighter as you can see lands a very high percentages of his punches Gonzalez is an action fighter if he can land that many punches or even half of them, we might have a real fight. Rules of the bout with our... Un In the power punch department, you can see what Gonzalez is up to. That's a tremendous number of hooks and crosses to be thrown in every round in that big fight against Letolo a few months ago. Once again, the trick is to be able to get to Jones. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside score, Harold Letterman. Okay, friend, the Roy Jones Jr. Julio Gonzalez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight in case the cut is caused.
Somebody has made a sighting of Roy Jones. And now it is time for the champion to make his way to the ring. An elaborate set from Roy Jones Jr. ever to be in this sport. An old sage once said about a mismatch in boxing, the whole world is a mismatch. And Roy Jones seems to have set out to prove it. The nays naysayers, and there are his twin sons, given his high standard and expectations have been dissatisfied because they feel that his style makes for boring fights very often. Ladies and gentlemen from Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, Bob Arum's top rank and square ring is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed light heavyweight championship of the world. Brought to you in association with your undisputed undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. Always proud to be your bud. Sanctioned by the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, the IBA, the IBO, the NBA, and the WBF, along with the California State Athletic Commission Chairman Manuel Cal Soto. The three judges scoring this bout on the 10 point must system here at ringside will be Robert Bird, Larry Rosadilla, and Peter Tremetera. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Raul Caiz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with green and red. He stands six feet two and weighs in at 174 and one half pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one, a perfect one. 27 bouts, 27 victories with 17 knockout victories. From Huntington Beach, California, by way of Guerrero Negro, Baja California, Mexico, here is the undefeated challenger, Julio Gonzalez. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue with white and weighing in at 173 pounds. He was named the most outstanding boxer of the 1988 Olympic Games. And now, as a professional, with a record consisting of 44 victories and one disputed loss, including 36 knockouts, he is universally recognized as the world's best boxer for a decade now. 
from Pensacola, Florida, presenting the four-time world champion, the former middleweight, former super middleweight, and reigning, defending, two-time undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Let's go to your corners. Being that we're in Los Angeles, the question can be framed this way. Have we seen this movie before? Or is it going to be something new and exciting? Roy Jones is promising the latter. One thing, George, I notice is that as tall as Ready, Gonzalez is, Ready, I look for Jones to go for his body. There's a big striking area to go for. Seven of the last nine opponents that Roy Jones Jr. has faced have been southpaws. Gonzalez, conventional right hand George your impressions on the difference in the size well the thing about uh, our uh, uh, the contender here Gonzalez is that uh He's a body puncher, and when you go down with that height and go to the body, you got to pay a price for a quick fighter like Roy Jones Jr. So he's going to have to pick up his hand, keep his left jab going, and do everything behind a quick left jab. Gonzalez working Jones's midsection with a left hand. Think about Roy Jones Jr. He's always making the, the light heavyweights look like heavyweights. And he's always willing to move like a middleweight. That's been his big advantage. Guys are just too slow for this guy. For Roy Jones Jr. Jones crumples Gonzalez with a full left hook. And Gonzalez goes straight down. With more than a minute to go in the round. That was you were talking about the price you got to pay, George, to get in, into Roy Jones. The good thing about Roy Jones Jr., he never tries to finish anyone off. So you can get right back into the fight if you wish. Well, in the first round, he generally tries to test somebody, and then... Uh, if, if the man is standing, he'll try to break him down. Gonzalez told us he believed that Jones' hold on, hold hand back. speed back has diminished. Certainly nothing slow about that left hook from Roy Jones. Jones displaying his quickness and speed with shots to the head. Quick uppercuts. Catches Gonzalez with two shots to the head. And shook him with that last combination. The flashes of brilliance from Roy Jones Jr. on display here in the first round. Don't make this guy intimidate you. He waited for that. He wanted 
throw that left foot. Keep right? that right hand out. Keep them punches up, huh? Just take your time. Don't, right. load, don't load up too much. Let it come natural. Roy, everything all right? Yep. Yep. all right? Keep them punches up. Watch your head. Don't get cut with a headbutt, son. No, that's me. Roy has uh, talked me. about his fear of earthquakes, as Fran pointed out. So here he delivers about a 6.3 on the Richter scale with a perfect left hook. Boy. One thing, uh, Roy the, has never got enough. Look at the knees there. Enough uh, credit for there. is his intelligence as a fighter. It's not just his quickness with his hands, but he is a very, very smart fighter. George, you pointed out the awkward fall of Julio Gonzalez. We saw that a week ago with Michael Grant against Jamil McClain. And you know, Roy Jones has got a habit of knocking guys down with those kind of shots, splitting the legs like that. That knee has still got to have a little shock in it right now, a little numbness. We should remind you, in his second to last fight, Julio Gonzalez and Julian Letterlow. There were five knockdowns in the fight. Gonzalez went down three times, but still won the fight. Come back up. Keep your punches up. Let's go. So he has shown some resiliency at points in his career. Roy Jones makes an awful bad mistake every boxing match. He allows guys that he's knocked down to get right back into these fights. Gonzalez gaining confidence, trying to work the body. Roy Jones has this powerful right to the body. And let me tell you, that's something that can drop someone in the same fashion he did in the first round with this guy. He's playing the counter puncher now. Gonzalez clearly enjoys the height advantage and the reach advantage. Punch, okay. You oh will my, not oh. see him try to outbox Roy Jones. Rather, he likes to get inside and mix it up with uppercuts and work to the bottom. He's allowed Jones to intimidate him now with his quick knockdown. Just got to jump on him and get wild. You can't be as good as Jones skillfully. Just jump on him and get wild. up with the right hand but he's blocked by Jones. Jones is clearly trying uh, to put an exclamation point on this fight because he's getting hit with some punches we don't ordinarily see him get hit which indicates that he's willing to stay closer to Gonzalez than he normally does. Shouldn't be getting hit at all after dropping a man in that fashion he should have gone for the finish. Jones, well, but he did well you know George he's basically cautious as a fighter and he believes that over the long run he can break down his opponent like a like a motor car engine he can also get broken down himself if this guy's got the spirit tonight a good round Don't concentrate on your big shots right now. Don't concentrate on the big shot. Let's try to touch him a little bit. Give him some different levels. When you touch him upstairs, go down and get the body. Okay? Yeah. Pull the body up. And then the, let a big shot go. Yeah. All right? Trying to shoot them big shots a lot right now. They'll come. Try to light combination, three, four point combination, then unload some more. Make sure you clean the water out this morning. The hot stops. All right? Keep those hands up. When you get inside, bang, bang. Right? Everything yeah, clean right. up that mess, guys. Right. You got a mess water all over the place. Yeah, okay. You got two down, two times. Take them up, okay? Beat them in a collarbone. Here's that big crowd. Around 18,000 people. Time! Tickets at a very reasonable $25 to $100, roughly two-thirds of the arena. $500 ringside. Come here and see a great fighter for 
as much or less than it would cost you to stay at home. Gonzalez doubling the jab output through two rounds. Eight of 53, 15 percent. Jones nine of 26, 35 percent. According to CompuBox, punch that number. Jones, a quick right hand counter. Jones is doing exactly what his corner told him to do. Take the power off, just land in some soft quick ones. Did exactly what he was told. You don't expect a fighter with that kind of experience and possible greatness to follow advice in that fashion. Upstairs. That's when your bigness pay off when you throw hard shots. Larry talked about Jones's willingness to allow Gonzalez. That's when you start hurting your hand. And those shots like Jones just oh God, threw that left hook right on the top of the yeah, head. Yeah, but then he's spinning. He didn't have his fist in the tight fashion. That hurts more than it does Gonzalez. Roy will wait a few minutes and try to get the hurt out of his hands before he throws in. Or go to the body like he just did. Quickness and speed of Roy Jones Jr. on display offensively and defensively as he backs away. From Julio Gonzalez. This is a pace we've seldom seen Jones fight at in recent years. He's being pressed by Gonzalez in a way that few fighters have. Roy Jones tries to make a guy hesitant, not to do anything, not to create any rhythm. And that's what he's not been able to do tonight. This guy has jumped right on him. Seemingly at ease. Usually, George, when a fighter gets hit with those quick punches he's never seen the likes of before, it intimidates him from coming forward as much as he wants to. But it has not intimidated Gonzalez fully here. He's backing off a little here, but he's attacking intelligently when he sees an opening. Gonzalez used to getting knocked down and used to getting up. He done start laying back a little bit now. Keep them feints going. Try to make him commit himself. <laughs> when you touch him, champ, don't move straight back. He try to counter through natural instinct. Move around him. Move around him. When he turns to you, be there to sit on him. Don't move out Here. too wide. Here. Okay? Yep. All right. He ain't coming. Get everything straight. Okay? You throw. You cannot keep your hands down. I told you, he's a counter puncher. Remember? Yeah. You're going to fire after you finish firing. You got to go right back at him. Yeah. Stay on his ass. Stay on his ass. All right, let's bring in Harold Letter. Let him in to see how Harold has it through three. Okay, friend. I tell you, I think it's a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Two rounds to one. 29-27, Roy Jones Jr. Julio Gonzalez looked pretty good in that second round, I'll tell you. He made that third round awful close, too. I thought he outpunched Roy Jones, you know, without doubt in the second round. Roy Jones absolutely gets an extra point. That's 10-8 in round one. Got to point one thing out to you that I don't like, and that's the fact that they let Roy Jones come out of the dressing room with only half the laces take. If you look at if you look at it, there's an awful lot of laces exposed for him, and you can heal a guy. It's an old-time thing where you can cut a guy using the laces. On the other hand, Julio Gonzalez is a gloves a take all the way up to the top. Jones threw three rounds, averaging 32 punches per round. Gonzalez, 49. 
The good thing about throwing body punches, as Gonzalez has been doing, you got to make the other guy throw punches to make them the punches more, uh, the body punches more effective. And Jones is coming ahead a little bit, so this could be a tiring thing if this fight goes during seven rounds. At what point does Julio Gonzalez's confidence rise as well after getting up off the canvas in the first round and seemingly settling in? Well, one thing about a good quick knockdown like that, you hardly remember it. <laughs> You're going to have to tell you, you are not dead. Jones startling Gonzalez with a counter. You know, sometimes when an unknown challenger uh, tends to be standing up against uh, a fighter of Jones's caliber, we, we, we might give him more credit than he's actually earned. But he's still in this fight. Jones is starting to dominate it from outside. Let's see if he can pick it up here and, and take it to Jones. Somebody Roy Jones is able to land the harder shots anytime he wants. He never tries to finish a fight. finish a fight, you can always get cut, a hit, buddy. Then you make a different fight. Jones catches Gonzalez with a left hook. Has Gonzalez been stung or hurt? Why is he laying back now and Jones is the aggressor? Jones is like a fox. He just makes you not want to do anything. Jones lunges across with a right hand. And lands three quick left hooks at the end of the round with speed in a hurry. Take a deep one. Tomate el agua. Tomate el agua. Julio, you have been down on yourself. Come on. Don't stop. You're ready to throw fire. You have been down on yourself. Come on. You train too hard for this fight. Don't have doubts. You can beat his ass. Now, come on. You want it? Yes, we do. All right, get this son of a All bitch. Right. Yeah, that old champ. That's what we've been working on. Okay? Way to keep them hands up on the inside. Don't move straight back on your desperation puncher, we. When you finish, you coming, okay? All right, everything is good, though. The knockdown punch in the first round was a, was a left. Jones got in two quick right hands. And they seem to discourage Gonzalez punch, punch, at the end now. of that last round, which is why you heard his corner trying to pick him up. Jones comes through with a left hook to the head of Gonzalez, and Gonzalez falls straight down. The second knockdown of the fight by Roy Jones Jr. And he is hurt, and Roy Jones looks like he wants to put him out of his hurt and finish the fight. Now we will see the quickness and speed of Jones. You can see the urgency pick up right away. Gonzalez though, rebounding. Catching his second win and going back to his game plan, attacking the body. Julio Gonzalez told us in our meeting yesterday there is no quit in his game and he is showing that tonight oh the referee may want to come into the rescue if this pot shot and continues big overhand right by Jones Gonzalez is susceptible to that punch all night long after he throws a left hand he's slow to bring it back 
He's following Jones around, and Jones is only measuring him for right hands. Gonzalez, you saw his head charge. Sometimes Roy Jones fights in a fashion that makes many people believe there's one less great fighter in the world than he thinks there is. Tonight he's fighting like a fighter who makes his critics believe there's one more great fighter in the world. And they think he is. Round six scheduled for 12 between Roy Jones Jr. and Julio Gonzalez for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Jones, 43 of 44 punches for power shots. He landed 27 for a 63% clip. George Julio Gonzalez has been knocked down twice, but He's gotten back up. Roy Jones revealed to us that he has dealt with soreness in his hands throughout most of his professional career. And he even says sometimes, if he believes a fighter will be there for the long haul, he may pull back to save his hands. Could that be a possibility tonight? He's pulled back tonight. I don't think it's only the hand. He's concerned about his stamina also. He went back to his corner one round, breathing pretty heavy. Well, like I said before, George, he's just not used to fighting at this pace. He's used to the opponent by this time backing off and just having a nice little sparring session. Emmanuel Stewart also pointing out earlier that Jones is a safety first fighter. So if he feels he might not be able to take Gonzalez out, we might not see an all-out attack. Gonzalez, he's he going to be the champion. He's going to have to start putting it out there. He can't be careful. Jones rattling Gonzalez with a left hook. <laughs> but Gonzalez is like being robbed in a parking lot. You can't see him telling you to stick him up. <laughs> Jones back quick. Lunges through with the left uppercut. <laughs> like I would fight you, but I can't quite find you. Derek Harmon. Harmon landed 47% of his total punches and over 60% power punches. We're seeing Gonzalez try to take that same approach tonight. 
Big overhand right from Roy Jones Jr. to close out the sixth round. All right, six rounds are in the books. Let's check in with Harold Letterman. Okay, Fred, five rounds to one, 59-53, Roy Jones Jr. That sixth round was absolutely incredible for Roy. I mean, he hit him with everything in the book. That's what's happening right now. I mean, Julio Gonzalez looking for the left hook, getting hit with a lead right. Looking for the lead right, getting hit with an uppercut. He just doesn't know what to look for. It's incredible. The hand speed of Roy Jones Jr. is causing him to land the clean, effective shots, and the clean, effective punching is what's winning him the rounds. In between rounds, in the corner of Julio Gonzalez, you heard his trainer, Matt Kurihara. Kurihara resembling the character of Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid movies. And he completely plays that up when we met with him yesterday, Larry. Yeah, he's a great character and a good trainer. Has his own methods. Put this kid from the age of 12 and brought him to this opportunity. Gonzalez doing his best work of the fight so far. Good shots. Right hand to the body by Gonzalez that, that time. Let me tell you, those punches hurt. And most importantly, it takes two legs away from him. Roy Jones Jr. leans in with his head. Right foot is about to take off backwards. Hard guy to catch with a shot unless you got him against the ropes. You got to keep his back against the ropes if you're Gonzalez. Gonzalez laying back a little bit now, fighting a little bit more cautiously. And who can blame him? get a little restless. You can see whenever he gets Roy Jones against the rope, he's able to land shots. Why not keep him there? You can win fights just keeping a guy on the rope. Whenever we see Roy Jones on the ropes, George, it seems that it's his choice, not his opponent's, because of his quickness. You gotta be foxy enough to know if I can only hit this guy when he's against the rope. Make the whole fight stay with his back against the rope. Jones certainly a little less effective in the seventh round. I know what your strategy is. Don't ship too much without dropping something off on it. Okay? Yep. All right, then. All right. Boy, I know you didn't hear it, but obey it. Okay. Protect yourself at all times. Right. Punch is feeling any different. You have to feel any different. It's your shoulder. ain't lighting up yet, huh? Come up and stone. I got you. I got you. Uh -huh. That's okay. Just keep doing what you're doing. This is what it's like, folks. You're in the corner. And there it comes. Go 
George, watching what Roy Jones is doing to a big guy like Gonzalez, can you project him against some smaller guys like Hopkins and Trinidad? Now this guy's fox enough to fight in any way division he wants. He, they will not be able to hit him with any sharp punches. He's able to get out of the way too quick. And he thinks constantly. A very rare combination there, a right hand followed by a right uppercut. He dictates the fight, pace, and he throws shots when he wants. And he makes you afraid when he doesn't want to throw shots. Gonzalez definitely now slowed up. Not as anxious to leave himself open for those quick punches. So the question may be, is Roy Jones willing to go at him to try to finish him? He's able to land three rights to the body, Roy Jones did. And just when the guy's expecting to protect his body, he goes up on top of the right hand. Jones lunging through with a left hook upstairs. to the body now for some reason. Just when this guy starts to protect himself a little bit, he's going to open up back on top. That's what he's hoping. Overhand right by Roy Jones Jr. The crowd voicing their opinion. I think they want to see a little bit more action. George has, I think Jones. He, has, jo has Jones slowed down a little bit. You know, he, his best shot was that earlier punch in the, in, the, in the beginning of the fight, and I don't think he's going to get any more powerful as the fight goes on. He is not the biggest guy for the light heavyweight division, so you don't expect that knockout power in the latter round. That body whipping he's giving Gonzalez will make you sit on the stool and not get up. Gonzalez told us he won't be going anywhere, and he isn't. Still alive here in the eighth round. He's not too many. He's not throwing that many punches in the wall. All right? Yeah. All right. Now you can get to him if you wanted to. It's all up to you now. Come on. Okay? Yeah. You can get to him. You can get to him. Think positive. Come on, tell us. Come on, tell us. Hit the sun. You close enough to throw the right hand. Throw it and get down. Number three. Okay. Yeah. You delay. You delay no, one no, second. No. Don't delay any punches. Okay, tamam. Let it go. Let it go. Okay, tamam. Let it go. Okay, tamam. Let it go. Okay, tamam. You gotta, you gotta clean this up. You're making too much of a. Well, okay. question that his trainer really is asking Put Gonzalez up, is Let's go. have you decided to merely survive is this fight over or you still have it in you to go for a win this is not unlike many fights we've seen Roy Jones in early in the fight an opponent is fresh Perhaps a little hopeful, he comes to Jones. Jones begins to pepper him. The opponent backs off. Jones takes his time to break him down. And we get rounds like we just did. Larry, is this the kind of fight that is going to endear Jones' critics? Come on, let's punch. In terms of Roy believing he should be pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Well, first half of the fight, 
and they've given his critics something to think about. Uh, not that they wanted to put him above Trinidad and Mosley, but that at 32 years of age, he still brings something to the party that's very special. We'll see how the last six rounds go. Threatens a bolo punch and comes across with a right hand. Not like too many other punches you've seen thrown lifetime. Roy Jones is so talented, has so much skill. But it just depends on how much he wants to put on display. Let's bring in Harold to see how he has it through nine. <laughs> okay, Fred. Eight, eight rounds to one. 89-80, Roy Jones Jr. Give him an extra point. The rounds one and five for the knockdowns. And I'll tell you, the rest of the rounds, he's just pulling out all the tricks. Do you notice where he went south for the last round? Jones tried to pick up the pace in the last round as well, Harold. Landing 21 of 36 power shots. At a 58% flip. Incidentally, Julio Gonzalez has never scored a knockdown past the ninth round. It would appear he needs a knockout to win the fight. Roy Jones has been able to land good body shots throughout this fight, which doesn't leave Gonzalez with a lot of power for the latter round. Those body shots take all of your energy as far as knockout power away. And that is the Jones staple. Wear you down, wear you down. Work the body, break you down. And as he says, he likes to get his fighters to quit. Gonzalez looking for one good shot. You're not going to get it. You must throw your hands. Let your hands go. Build up 
of this fight that he has suffered from this big right hand from Jones, and he comes back with a left hook. Gonzalez should just say, look, this guy's hit me with his best shot. I'm just going to mix it up with him and throw something with him. If you're going to get hit anyway, you may as well be throwing shots. Ray Jones has only been down once in his career. Nice knockdown by Lou Del DelVal. In the fight, he's won going away. It's hard to imagine that he can be knocked out to lose this fight. We talked about Roy Jones' status on the pound-for-pound pound list. Larry, tell me yours. Well, here's a look, a personal look at the pound-for-pound. Pound. I've jumped Felix Trinidad ahead of Shane Mosley because Trinidad is fighting the best fighters out there one after another. Roy Jones uh, believes that he should be number one forever because he once was and he hasn't lost, but uh, this is a what have you done for us lately kind of a of a show. Bernard Hopkins has defended his middleweight title 13 times and Oscar De La Hoya. Mayweather, Barrera, Morales, Park Wai, and Vargas finish my top 10. <clears throat> Manny Pacquiao beating Lelo Lequaba on the Oscar De La Hoya card back in June, making an appearance on TVKO and sneaking into Larry's top ten. Seems to be. Cap in the step of Roy Jones. Yeah, he's paced himself all alone. Gonzalez should just let his hands fly as soon as Roy Jones does anything, just throw some something. That's his only chance. Jones threw only 16 punches in the 10th and landed 12. Slap to the body of Julio Gonzalez. Six, seven fights. Where well, the crowd and critics have felt that Roy did enough to win. Not enough to put on an impressive showing. He constantly, him. excuse me, he constantly moves to Gonzalez's left. This guy's got no chance to put his feet down in a position to throw a good shot. going to do and get out of the way. Puts his left foot on the other side of the left foot of Gonzalez. Gets out of the way. The camp of Julio Gonzalez thought Roy Jones would run the entire fight. Well, he's starting to do that now. Except spurts like that. If he's so much quicker with his hands, why doesn't he just stand there and go? With Gonzalez. Is it taking too much of a risk, George, or that's just not who he is?
this round. Calm down, okay. Okay. All right. Three minutes, Julio. Three minute drill. All right. I need to get away with people. I saw Tomatella. All right. Three minute drill, Julio. All right. Yeah. Tighten up this shit. Okay. All right. Last one, baby. Let's shine. Let's shine. Drum out real good, dog. What's that? Hey, stop tightening on the street. Get inside. Bang, bang. One, two. Let's go. Cada vez que tires, Nico, levanta las manos. Eh? Cada vez que tires, levanta las manos. Pintelo, güey. Se va a caer. Will Roy Jones try to close the show? Or will the bell ring once again? Roy Jones' right foot is just out there, ready to take out. More so than the hitcher, he's ready to take off. You mean take off in, in a backward direction? Yeah, get, let's get out of here. He's got the power, he's got the connection. Connection well, rate, he just doesn't want to do it. Well, what he says is, I'm not a, I'm gonna hit you and you're gonna hit me kind of a fighter. I'm a, I'm gonna hit you and you're not gonna hit me kind of a fighter. So that back foot is always ready to retreat. George, we talked about it at the beginning of the fight. A possible mega fight looms for Roy Jones against possibly Felix Trinidad or Bernard Hopkins. Based on what you're seeing tonight, how do either of those fights match up? When you talk about paying $50 and $500 and $39 for a boxing match, <laughs> some people should look for a little something for their money. That sounds like a criticism of Roy Jones. You feel that he should close the show with some real style. Sorry to leave you out there like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so do the fans here. tell you his job is strictly to win the fight and the build up to this fight big right hand crumples gonzalez in the 12th round george how do you like that and let's see if he goes for the finish now got about 30 seconds left now will he pepper and pepper and pepper or will he give us something to write home about the fans will decide well Roy Jones Gonzalez got knocked down and it was he who attacked Roy Jones to make it look nice Jones trying to turn it on to end the show, landing 20 of 26 power shots. To at least please the crowd. Sometimes there are sparring sessions and there are boxing matches. Exhibitions. Boxing matches. <laughs> All right, so throughout the fight, we'll take a look at the pivotal points. The knockdown in round one, 
The strong left hook to the head. Then on the fifth round, Jones drops Gonzalez again with a short left hook. And finally, what we just saw, another left hand, but the overhand right that Gonzalez was susceptible to the entire fight brings him to the canvas for a third time. Pretty quiet here in the Staples Center, George. <laughs> All right, let's send it up to Michael Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Robert Byrd scores the bout 119 to 106. Larry Rosadilla scores it 118 to 107. Peter Tremetera scores it 119 to 106. All for the winner by unanimous decision and still the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. So let's take a look at the final punch stat numbers for this light heavyweight championship between Jones and Gonzalez. And even though Gonzalez landed over 200 more, or threw over 200 more punches, it was Jones landing at a much higher percentage, 51 to 15. The power punches tell the same story. Gonzalez throwing 69 more power punches, but it's Jones more than doubling Gonzalez's power punch output, 57% to 17%. Larry Merchant standing by with Roy Jones. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Roy. You said going into this fight, this was a new beginning. You felt a new sense of mission. How do you think you achieved those things tonight? Well, my thing, first of all, I take my head off and say, thank God for giving me the opportunity to do what I did. Thank Bob Bram, this is a beautiful promotion. Thank the people up at Great Gorge for having me come up. Uh, thank everybody at Pensacola. I know y'all cheering Pensacola in the house. All my fans in Newark, all my fans in D.C., everybody all around the world that supports Roy Jones. Thank you very much. And uh, the guy was a tough opponent. Um, I felt good coming to the fight. Both my hands were a little tender. I hurt him several times, but I hurt myself when I hurt him. So I had to back off and kind of buy me some time. The left knuckle that's swollen, the right knuckle hurting, but I had to do my thing. You know? All right, so you're telling us that on the occasions in the first half of the fight when you knocked him down, you hurt your hand and you you couldn't then uh, finish him off for that reason? No, that's not the reason I didn't finish him off now. I wouldn't have tried to finish him off no way because he has a quick recovery. When you watch him in the Levelo fight, Levelo knocked him out basically almost every time he dropped him. But the guy comes back, and he's stronger when he comes back than he is when he go down. He reminds you a little bit of Felix Trinidad. That's what, another reason I wanted to fight him, because I knew he goes down, but he gets up and comes back even harder. And I like that. It seemed that for at least the first half of the fight, you were getting into more exchanges. You were willing to stand and go with him. Uh, was that because you came here with a statement to make? No, that was because I came here, the people want to see some exchanging. They want to see me hit, they want to see you get hit. I'm not going to run from a guy for 12 rounds. I know the guy's strong, bigger than me. You know, I came in the fight at 176, so I know I had a lot of size disadvantage, but I'm still not going to run from nobody. You know, like I said, I'll fight. I'm a champ. I'll fight whoever. Uh, I feel good. Um, you know, it's tough. Like, like I said before, it's tough fighting these guys who you don't know but they come in to win. And that's what I like to see in a fight. This cat came to win. I appreciate that, I respect that. I thank God for letting us work it out okay. I'm very proud of my performance. Let's take a look at those knockdowns and and have you describe them to me when we can uh, get them up here. This this is in round one. So the first one, I slipped his jab, I came with the left hook, and down he went. But uh, you see how bad his knees go? But the guy is strong, the guy gets up every time. 
Uh, Bob said he had the heart of a lion, and he does. And see how quickly he recovers from a knockdown like that you think is over with. Now, this same is thing, round five. Same thing. It's a little bit shorter. Same exact punch. Down he goes again, and it looks like he's out. But the cat comes back. You know, the guy has a big heart. And uh, I just love the fact that he came out. He's challenged. He gave it everything he had. And I thank God for opponents like that. All right. You mentioned Felix Trinidad. Um, at, with obvious, for obvious reasons, would you tell us your thought on what happens on September 15th between Trinidad and Hopkins and how serious you are about meeting the winner. Uh, what I think uh, may happen the 15th is I'm looking for a tough fight for both fighters. Uh, Tito can knock Hopkins out. Will he or not, I don't know. Hopkins is a very, very tough opponent. After that fight, the winner of that fight deserves a shot at Roy Jones Jr. If we can make a legitimate uh, contractual agreement without done doing things that are not right. You got to remember those guys are coming up to challenge me for the pound for pound best title. So I should get be the beneficiary to get the big end of the stick. I don't want too much. I just want my respect. And my respect is that I'm the bigger guy who's coming down to make weight. I'm the guy who's been there 12 years. You know what I'm saying? So I deserve that much respect. They're willing to give me that. I'm willing to fight the winner of the fight. Whenever, wherever, however, and for how long. So Let's you're saying Bring it, train. So you came in at two pounds under the light heavyweight limit to, tonight. You're saying you'll come down to 168 to meet them halfway between the middleweight and light heavyweight divisions. Roy Jones do you, Jr. will do whatever's necessary to make a big fight happen. Y'all must have forgot. And don't forget to cop that album coming out in October. Don't miss it. Round one, the album, baby. Roy Jones will go down and do anything necessary to make a fight, Larry. You know, I'm that guy who always been here as a champion. I'm willing to step in. If I got to give my titles up again to go down and make a big fight happen for my fans, I'm down to make the fight happen because that's what the fans want to see. That's what we give them. Thank you very much, Roy. You, LA. Friend? All right, Larry. So Roy Jones Jr. wins a unanimous decision against Julio Gonzalez. George, he mentioned in that interview that he hurt his left hand, his left knuckle, in the fight. Could his hands be a problem against either Felix Trinidad or Bernard Hopkins if that potential mega fight is made? Poor little left hand. You know, you think about it, uh, Archie Moore, some of the best fighters in the world have come out and, and built, took years to build up the light heavyweight division to make it almost an ch automatic challenge for the heavyweight division. This is not the way you follow it with these kind of sparring sessions. It just doesn't look good for Archie Moore. It doesn't look good for the past heavy, future, uh, light heavyweight champions of the world. He's good, and he's talking about going down to be gooder. <laughs> gooder or badder. Anyway, I don't like it. I just don't like this stuff. I want to see a guy, if he's hurt, he's hanging on. Finish him off. Don't make him punch drunk. Don't keep beating on his head one shot and then hurting your precious knuckles. Finish the fighter off. All right, so George Foreman wants to see else? more activity. <laughs> Larry Merchant is in the ring with Julio Gonzalez. All right, thank you, friend. Julio, you put up a brave fight. Was he just simply too quick for you? Oh, well, it was too quick and, and the best in the world. So I don't know, quick, strong, whatever you want to put it, you beat me. Did you think early in the fight, even after that first knockdown in the first round, that you still had a chance to hurt him? Yeah, yeah, I thought I, I could hurt him, you know, I was putting a lot of pressure. I, I pushed him back and I connected a couple punches, but didn't hurt him and, and he hurt me. Were you surprised after the knockdowns that he didn't put more pressure on you to try to finish the fight? Well, who knows, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, I don't know. Uh, maybe, he wanted to test me out more. I don't know what it would. I was a little surprised that he didn't try to knock me out, but I, I know he wasn't going to knock me out. The last part of the fight looked like a more like a sparring session. Had you essentially know that it was going to be very difficult to get to him if he didn't really want to come to you anymore? Well, I don't know why you call it a sparring session. You, I, I don't see you in here, you know, try, with the headgear or with the gloves. This is a fight, you know? I mean, from his point of view, that he was more willing to win on points at that at that point. Well, if he's willing to win on points, that's fine, you know. If he does, he said he was going to knock me out. He put me down, but he didn't finish me out, so it's all right. Thank you very much for a brave fight. Thank you. Back to you, JB. All right, Larry. Thank you very much. And uh, 
Emmanuel, I have to ask you. I, I disagree with a lot of what I heard. I thought Roy Jones brought his A game here. Elaborate, if you will, on the fact that he was fighting a much bigger guy. Well, I think it was a much bigger factor than most people have pointed out. This guy's physical size was a big, big handicap to Roy. Roy, you could see what hit the guy, but he could just feel the strength steadily pressing him, and he couldn't really effectively hurt him continually. I still think that Roy should have knocked the guy out. I mean, I, I, the fight went as I expected, but I thought Roy would have opened up more and finished the guy off. Roy was a little reluctant, and I think... Why do that, you think Roy was reluctant? I think he was reluctant because the physical size was bothering him a lot, and the fact that he's really concerned about getting hit. Put that together, and it stops him from being as great as he should possibly be. Okay, we heard the guys downstairs weigh in on a possible mega fight if it materializes, whether it's Trinidad or okay. Hopkins. Your thought okay. about that? Well, based on what I saw tonight, he's going to have his hands full of fighting Trinidad or Hopkins. These guys are more aggressive. He's not going to be able to control and contain them as easy as he was tonight with Gonzalez. Gonzalez's knockdowns was really more or less from him being off balance and clumsy. I hate to say that. But if you watch the knockdowns, it was when he was moving forward, throwing punches himself usually. And if you hit him when he's moving forward, he's so unorganized and uncoordinated that you get the knockdowns. But when he gets up, he's clear-headed because he really wasn't hurt as much as being off balance. But when he fight Hopkins or Trinidad, it's going to be a different ball game altogether. Well, they ought to force the action even more so. I still think that speed kills and the intelligence that Roy displayed this evening, that frustrated as well. All right, folks. Jones versus Gonzalez has been brought to you by Staples Center, GoldenPalace.com. Brew Refresh Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This Bud's for you. By Bodyhead Entertainment, pleased to bring you Round One, the album by Roy Jones Jr. We're also brought to you this evening by Jordan Brand and TVKO pay-per-view from HBO. And indeed, special thanks to America Online and AOL members for participating in the round-by-round -round judging during tonight's telecast. We'd also like to thank our internet partners and the following magazine partners. And so for all of us here at Staples Center in Los Angeles, California, I'm James Brown saying good night. Our executive producer is Rick Bernstein. Tonight's broadcast has been produced by Dave Harmon and directed by Mark Payton. Associate producers, Brian Lockhart and Israel De Herrera. Assistant to the producer, George Jakovic. Production manager, John McCalley. Technical supervisor, Bob Hunter. And the technical director was Doug Getz. presentation of TVKO, pay-per-view from...